So in this lecture, I want to present some examples of normed linear space. So before I start, let me just state a remark, which will be used many times. Assume that you have a sequence xn, which is Cauchy, in some space x. So in all this lecture, x will be a normed linear space, and we will represent its norm by uh, this symbol. So assume that xn is a Cauchy sequence on this normed linear space. And what I claim is that then there exists a finite constant c not such that xn is less or equal than c not for all n larger than 1. Right? So this means that any uh, Cauchy sequence, it's actually bounded. And that's uh, very easy. Well, take epsilon to be equal to 1. So I know since xn is Cauchy that there exists n not such that if n and m are larger than n not, then xn minus xm, it's smaller than 1, which since I took epsilon to be 1. So this means that if m is larger than n not, the norm of xm it's by the triangle inequality, this is bounded by xm minus xn naught plus xn naught. And this, it's bounded since m and n naught are larger than n naught. This is bounded by 1 plus xn naught. So this proves that for all m larger than n naught, the norm of xm it's bounded by 1 plus the norm of x and not. Therefore, x n it's less than 1 plus the maximum for k between 1 and n not of x k. Right? This is obviously true if n is between 1 and n0 because n x the norm of xn is less than the or less or equal than the maximum. And from that inequality, these inequality also hold for the case in which n is larger than n naught. So we have proved this inequality, and so this is our constant c0, which is finite, proving our claim. So this remark will be used many times in this lecture. If I have a Cauchy sequence, then this um, sequence is bounded. So I will present four examples in this lecture. The first one will be the space L infinity. So this is the space of all sequences AJ, J larger than 1, such that, well, AJ belongs to our space, our field K. So which is either, as we remember, either the real numbers or the complex number, and such that the supremum in J of the absolute value of AJ is finite. So this is our space, X, and I leave it to you to check that this is a linear space. You can add two sequences, and you can multiply your sequence by a scalar. So the first claim is that, and it's left to you, is that this is a linear space. Now, the second step is to define a norm. And again, I will define a norm, and I will leave it to you to check that this is indeed a norm. So if you take a sequence AJ, I will define the norm of this sequence as the supremum of AJ for J larger than 1. I know that this is finite, and by definition, because this is exactly the space of all such sequences, and I leave it to you to check that um, this definition satisfies the uh, three properties required for norm. Now, what I will uh, show is that this space is complete. 
And this is, um, well, what I want to show for this example. And therefore, to prove that this is indeed a Banach space. So that it's complete, let me take a sequence, xn, which is a Cauchy sequence. So remember the notation, xn for each n, xn is a sequence. And so xn is actually the sequence xn1, xn2, and so on. And I'm, in my mind, when I'm talking about a sequence, I'm considering a line. If I take a sequence of sequences, each line represents a sequence, and we have, um, well, a sequence of lines, and these are, this is my sequence. So Xn is a Cauchy sequence. This means that for any epsilon, there exists n0, such that if n and m are larger than n0, the norm of Xn minus Xm is bounded by epsilon. And I want to prove that this Cauchy sequence converge. So this will be done always in two steps. In step one, I have to find a candidate. So I have to construct an element x, which will be the limit of this sequence, xn. So x will be, again, a sequence. And in step two, I'll have to prove that the sequence xn converge to x. So um, we will proceed step by step. I will first construct my candidate x, and then we'll prove that the sequence xn, which is Cauchy, converge to x. So I just remember that xn, it's a Cauchy sequence, and I'm representing xn. So xn represents a sequence, xn1, xn2, and so on. So to construct my candidate, so we are going to build our candidate in step one, I will claim that if you consider just the first, the first coordinate of this sequence, so I'm taking the first coordinate of each sequence, that, well, these are elements of my space K, and they form a Cauchy sequence. To prove that they form a Cauchy sequence, let me fix epsilon positive from um, the fact that xn is a Cauchy sequence. I know that there exists n0 such that if n and m are larger than n0, then xn minus xm is bounded by epsilon. But what's the definition of the norm? Well, this is equal to the supremum in J of xnj minus xmj for j, well, let me take supreme of this for j larger than 1. So I know that this supremum is bounded by 1. Well, uh, this supremum is bounded by epsilon. And since I'm taking the supremum in j, it's clear that if I consider xn1, just the first coordinate, well, that x, this absolute value is bounded by this supremum, and which means that if I take n and m larger than n0, this difference, it's bounded by epsilon, which means that xn1, it's a Cauchy sequence. So if I just look at the first coordinate, I get a Cauchy sequence of um, real or complex numbers. Since the real numbers or the complex numbers are complete, this Cauchy sequence converge. This means that xn1 converge to x1 as n goes to infinity. And I can repeat the same argument for each coordinate. So if instead of looking at the first coordinate, I look at the third one, I also get that this absolute value, now replacing 1 by 3, that this is bounded by the supremum, which is bounded by epsilon. So what I actually can show is that for any k, fixed k as a sequence of n, 
x and k, it's a Cauchy sequence. And therefore, it converges to some xk. And here is my candidate. My candidate clearly is x, which is the sequence x1, x2, and so on, in which each coordinate is the limit of the coordinates of the sequence xn. So here is my candidate. This completes step one. I have now a candidate. And what remains to be proven is that my sequence xn converge to x. Of course, before I do that, I have to make sure that x belongs to L infinity, right? Maybe uh, this sequence is converging to some point which doesn't belong to our space, so I have to make sure that um, this sequence belongs to L infinity, but let's consider xj. Well, we've seen that x and k, it's um, a Cauchy sequence, so this is the limit in n of x n j. x and j, this is the norm of the jth coordinate, so this is bounded by the limit soup of x n. Right, because, well, the norm of x n is the supremum in j of x n j. So it's the supremum in j, right? And therefore, the supremum in j is certainly bounded, well, x n j is certainly bounded by the supremum. Therefore, for each fixed n, we have that x, the absolute value of x n j is bounded by the norm of x n. And therefore, the limit of x n j is bounded by the limit soup. And we proved in the remark, and this is why I proved the remark, is that this sequence is bounded. So there exists a constant C0 for which this limit soup is bounded by C0. And this C0 does not depend on J. So I can take the supremum here over J to get that the supremum in J of XJ, it's indeed bounded by a finite constant. And therefore, the sequence X belongs to our space L infinity because, well, the supremum of XJ, it's a finite. So now we have a candidate X given by these limits, which indeed belong to uh, the original space. So in step two, we want to prove that the sequence xn converge to our candidate x, where I remind you that xj is the limit of in n of x and j. Fine. So let's fix epsilon. What we have to prove is that uh, for n sufficiently large, xn minus x, it's bounded by epsilon, right? This is the goal. Now what we know is that the sequence xn, it's Cauchy. So we know that there exists n0 such that if n and m are larger than n0, then xn minus xm, it's bounded by epsilon. Fine, but what does that say? Well, this is the norm. This means that the supremum in J of X and J minus X M J, that this is bounded by epsilon. So this supremum is bounded by epsilon for any N and M larger than J. So let me take J equal to one. This says that X N one minus X M one it's bounded by epsilon for all n and m larger than n0. So I can send m to infinity. And if I send m to infinity, since x m1 converge to x1, this will converge to x1. And from this inequality, I will conclude that x l1 minus x1, it's bounded by epsilon for all n larger than n0. And what I did for j equal to 1 can be repeated for any j. So if I fix any j larger than 1, I know that the supremum is bounded by epsilon, which means that 
for that fixed j. So maybe not to mix things up, let me take k instead of j. So if I fix a k, this difference is bounded by the supremum. The supremum is bounded by epsilon. So this difference, the absolute value of this difference, is bounded by epsilon for all n and m larger than n0 for that fixed k. So I send m to infinity. And what I conclude is that x and k minus x k in absolute value, it's bounded by epsilon. And this for all k. Since it holds for all k, I can take the supremum over k. And this is still bounded by epsilon, provided that n is larger than n0. But this is exactly the norm between xn and x. So we proved that the norm between xn and x, it's bounded by epsilon for all n larger than n0. And this is exactly what we wanted to prove. So we wanted to prove that for any epsilon, we could find n0 for which this difference xn minus x is bounded by epsilon. And this is exactly what we proved. So we just proved that this sequence xn converged to x. Therefore, the space L infinity is complete for that norm. My second example is the space LP. So I'll fix P larger than 1. And I will represent by LP the space of sequences AJ such that, well, AJ, again, it's a scalar, so it belongs to K. And the sum for J larger than 1 of AJ to the power P, it's bound. So this is the definition of my space. I first claim that LP, it's a linear space. The fact that it's closed by a product by scalar, that's uh, clear. Well, let me take a few minutes to show you that uh, it's closed by addition. So I consider A and B elements of LP. So these are sequences, and we know that A, G to the power P, if I take the sum over for J called 1, this is finite. And the same thing for B. Now I want to define a new um, sequence, which is the sequence A plus B, whose um, jth coordinate is equal to the sum. And what I want to prove is that A plus B belongs to LP. So if you've never seen that, um, let me give you an argument. I want to bound AJ plus BJ to the power P. So this is less or equal than aj plus bj to the power p, because well, the absolute value of the sum is bounded by the sum of the absolute values, and p is larger than 1. Now, um, this is bounded by 2 times the maximum of aj, aj, and bj, right? Well, the sum, it's clearly, well, each term it's bounded by the maximum. I have two terms, so it's bounded by 2 times the maximum of p. So this is bounded by 2 to the power p. Now I have the maximum, but the maximum to the power p, it's the same thing as taking the maximum of the powers. And the maximum of these powers is bounded by the sum. So 
So uh, we just proved this inequality that the absolute value of aj plus bj to the power p, it's bounded by 2 to the power p times aj to the power p plus bj to the power p. Now if I take the sum of this expression, I get 2p times the sum of this one plus the sum of that one, and these sums are bounded, which means that this sum is bounded, which means that a plus b, it's indeed an element of Lp, and therefore that uh, in the space Lp, it's a linear space. Now, uh, my second claim is that, um, well, we will introduce a norm, and that this object is a norm. So for a sequence A, I will define the P norm of A as the sum of AJ P, sum for J larger than one to the power one over P. And what I claim is that this is a norm. I leave to you to prove that this is a norm as an exercise, but we will need what is called the Hölder inequality. Which I will now explain. And you need this Hölder inequality if you want to prove the triangle inequality. So to prove all the other properties, it's quite straightforward. But to prove the triangle inequality, you'll need uh, this, what's called the Hölder inequality, which I will now explain. So assume that P is larger than 1. And let me represent by Q the associate number to P in the following sense, that 1 over Q plus 1 over P, it's equal to 1. Okay. Well, since P is larger than 1, Q is also uh, larger than 1. And what I claim is that if you take A, a sequence in LP, and B, a sequence in LQ. So this is Hölder inequality. Then if you consider the sequence AB, in which you just multiply coordinate by coordinate, so ABJ is just <coughs> AG, AJ, BJ, what I claim is that this sequence AB belongs to L1. And not only it belongs to L1, but that the sum for j larger than 1 of aj bj, that this is bounded by the norm p of a times the norm q of b. So we started from sequence a in Lp, sequence b in Lq. We define these norms. And what I claim is that this inequality hold. I will not prove this inequality here. You can find this proof in any book of, uh, in measure theory. And by assuming this inequality, it's not uh, very difficult to prove the uh, triangle inequality. Note that in the case in which p equal to 1, if p equal to 1, you get that q is equal to plus infinity. So these numbers are said to be the conjugate. So q is the conjugate of p. So the conjugate of 1 is plus infinity. And in the case in which p is equal to 1, and therefore q is equal to plus infinity, so L infinity, remember, is just instead of taking this sum, it's taking the supremum and defining by the, the supremum norm, uh, the infinity norm as the supremum. Well, this inequality is trivial because it's clear that AG BJ it's less or equal than the supremum in J of so Q it's infinity so the supremum of BJ times the sum of the absolute values of AJ so this is the one norm of A and this is the infinity norm of b. So in the case in which p equal to 1 and q equal to infinity, this inequality is elementary. But it holds also uh, for p and q conjugate. 
So if you have never seen that, go to a measure theory book to get the proof. And once you have um, the proof of the whole inequality, it's not very difficult to get the, well, it's, it's thick, well, it's not, it's, well, it's not trivial also to prove the uh, triangle inequality. So I invite you to try to prove the Hilden inequality, the triangle inequality for the norm LP, just to check that, well, this is indeed a norm. At this point, we have a linear space, which is normed with that norm. Remember that we had here the power 1 over p, so I took the power p of this norm to get this sum. And now uh, what I claim is that this space, LP, it's complete. And again, we will prove that in two steps. So step one, we have to find a candidate, and step two, prove the convergence. So let's consider a sequence Xn, which is Cauchy. Again, remember that Xn is a sequence, so it's Xn1, Xn2, and so on. And I'm assuming that this is a Cauchy sequence for that norm, and I want to, to find a candidate. So since it's Cauchy, again, for all epsilon, I can find n0 for which if n and m are larger than n0, then xn minus xm p, that, let me take the power p, that this is bounded by epsilon. So this means that this sum is bounded by epsilon. Well, if this sum is bounded by epsilon, it's clear that xn1 minus xm1 to the power p, that this uh, term, which is the first term which appears in this sum, it's bounded by the old sum. And the old sum, it's the norm of xn minus xm to the power p the norm p to the power p, and that this is bounded by epsilon. So from uh, this inequality, we get that for this fixed first coordinate, so if you observe the first coordinate of each sequence, that this is a new Cauchy sequence of scalars. So this proves that xn1 as a sequence in n is Cauchy, since it's Cauchy, it converges. So xn1 converge to some x1. And what I did for 1, I can repeat it for any k. So of course, if I look at the coordinate k, again, this expression is bounded by the norm. And the norm is bounded by epsilon because this is Cauchy, provided n and m are larger than n0. And therefore, this shows that the sequence x and k, sequence for k fixed as a sequence of n, it's Cauchy, and therefore that x k converge to x, some x k. So here it is my candidate, x will be x1, x2, and so on, where x k is the limit of this sequence x and k. Of course, I need to show that uh, the sequence I just obtained belongs to LP. And this is what uh, I will prove. So to prove that this sequence is uh, in LP, I have to show that this sum is finite. So let me fix capital K and look at the sum from 1 up to capital K of x n uh, of x k to the power x j to the power p. This sum is finite. x j is the limit of x n. So we know that this is equal to the limit in n of the sum from 1 to k 
of x and j to the power of p. And of course, this sum it's less or equal than the infinite sum. And the infinite sum, if I take the infinite sum here, what I get is the p norm of xn. So this sum, it's bounded by the p norm of xn to the power p. And therefore, this limit, it's bounded by the limit soup in n of this sequence. But as we have seen, since xn is a Cauchy sequence, the sequence of its the norms are bounded. So this limit soup, it's bounded by some constant c0. So there exists a constant c0 for which this limit soup is bounded by c0. And that c0 does not depend on k. Why do you see that this holds for any k? This constant doesn't depend on k. So I can now take the limit as k goes to infinity to conclude that the LP norm of x is bounded by constant c0. Right? If I send k to plus infinity, what I get on the left-hand side is the p norm of x to the power p. So the p norm of x to the power p is bounded by constant zero, so it's finite, and therefore x belongs indeed to LP. So we have now a candidate x which indeed belongs to LP, and what remains to be done is to show that the sequence xn converge to this candidate. So step two, I want to prove that my sequence xn converge to x, where remember xj is the limit of xnj for all j. So I know that xn is Cauchy, so fix epsilon. I want to prove that xn minus xp p, it's less than epsilon for all n larger than n0. Right, so this is, uh, I want to show that for any epsilon I can find n0 for such that this inequality holds for all n larger than n0. That fixed epsilon, since x is Cauchy, I know that there exists n0 such that if n and m are larger than n0, then xn minus xm p p it's less than epsilon. But what is this? This is the sum for j larger than 1 of xnj minus xmj to the power p. So this is bounded by epsilon. So here again, let me fix an integer k. Let's consider the sum from 1 up to k of xn j minus x m j to the power p. I know that this is bounded by epsilon, right? Because, well, the total sum is bounded by epsilon, so this expression is bounded by epsilon for all k n and m larger than n0. Now, x and j for a fixed j, it's converging to xj. So I can take the limit as m goes to infinity. And when I take the limit as m goes to infinity, what I get here is xj. And this will tell me that the sum from 1 to k of x and j minus xj to the power p is bounded by epsilon. And this holds for all n larger than n0 and for all k. So if I send k to infinity, since this expression is bounded by epsilon for all k, what I get is that the sum from 1 to infinity is also bounded by epsilon. But this is exactly the p 
p-norm to the power p. So we proved that for all n larger than n0, the p-norm to the power p of xn minus x is bounded by epsilon, which proves that xn converges to x, and therefore that lp, it's a complete normed linear space. So the third example, it's um, about continuous functions. So I'll consider that I have a metric space. So M, it's a metric space. D, it's uh, its distance. And I'm considering the topology induced by this distance. And I will define by C0 of M the space of continuous function. So this is the space, say, of functions f from m to the complex of the real numbers such that, well, f, it's continuous, and f has compact support. So this is uh, space space of continuous function with compact support. What I claim is that, well, this is a linear space. That's clear. If you take the sum of two continuous functions, it's continuous. The support, it's contained in the union of the supports. So it's clear that um, the sum, this space, it's closed by addition. It's closed also by multiplication by a scalar. So it's linear. So now let me define a norm. So the norm of function f will be the infinity norm. So this is the supremum of f of x for x in m. Well, this is finite because f has compact support. I leave it to you to check that um, this is a norm so that it satisfies the three properties of the norm. That's very simple. And finally, well, this space is not complete. If you take a sequence of uh, functions with a compact support, maybe the limit has not a compact support. You can take, uh, let's say, m to be r. You can easily produce a um, sequence of functions um, which is Cauchy, but which, is, which does not converge. So um, I leave it to you to prove, to give a counterexample in which this space is not complete. So find the space, a metric space, a sequence of functions which are continuous and with compact support, which is Cauchy, but which does not converge for this norm. Of course, if the space M is compact. So if M is compact, then the space is complete. And I leave this uh, statement, this claim, also as an exercise. So now suppose that the space M is a compact space. Prove that C0M endowed with this norm, it's a normed linear space which is complete. So my final example, in the following you take D, a subset of Rn, which uh, say it's, um, well, open and connected. And you consider C0 of D as the space of functions from D to R, which are continuous and with compact support. So we've seen in the previous example that uh, this space C0D, it's um, linear. It's closed by addition and multiplication by scalar. But now we will define a different norm in this space. I'll fix p larger than 1, and I will define 
the LP norm of f as the integral of over d of fx to the power p dx to the power 1 over p. So what I claim is that um, this defines, well, this is clearly finite because f has compact support and it's continuous, so it's bounded and has finite, uh, finite support. Now, this is well defined, it's finite. I leave it to you to check that uh, this is a norm. And here again, to prove that this is a norm, you will need the Euler inequality to prove the triangle inequality for the norm. So I leave it to you as an exercise or uh, to try to prove that, or if you have never seen that, to go to a book in measure theory and to indeed check that um, the triangle inequality is satisfied. And again, while this space is not complete, so again, um, find the sequence Fn, which is Cauchy for this norm and which does not conver uh, converge in LP. The main problem was, will be that, well, the limit will not be continuous. You take a sequence of continuous function and you, you cook an example in which the limit is not continuous. So you, well, the differences can be, um, the sequence can be Cauchy, but it won't converge. And, well, the completion of that space so you started with this space of continuous function with that norm, you get something which is not complete. Now you proceed as in the previous lecture in which uh, I've shown how to complete a space. So you proceed in this way, you get now, you embed this space in a complete space and the complete space is what we call the LP space, which will appear many times uh, in these lectures. So when we, well, this is, let's say, the main example which will appear. You started with uh, th this space of continuous function. You define a norm in this continuous function. The space is not complete. Now you proceed, as in the previous lecture, to complete the space, and you have a new space in which you will work, and you know that um, the original space, so the space of continuous function with compact support, is dense in this space for that norm by construction. And that will be a very important property uh, of um, these spaces, the density of continuous function with compact support in these spaces. So this is the last example, and uh, so this concludes this, uh, this lecture.